New and unique concepts are incredibly hard to come by. A mix of what you know and what you want to show can sometimes be the key to optimizing that box of creative energies and letting in a totally new and original concept. This week, join me, Zach Walsh, as I interview Rich about his game and supplies. We talk about adapting a game into a sign language teaching tool, mental health, and the excitement of running a successful Kickstarter. Again, then. So, yeah, we'll start again in just a second now that it's recording. <laughs> I should have known because it's coming up, coming up green now. I should have known it was. Yeah, recording. it's coming up green, and it's such a good thing just to show. I might actually keep this in because it's kind of funny. Yeah, you should definitely keep that. <laughs> Hi, everybody! Brilliant. Welcome to Schedule for Launch, a podcast to talk about the projects you may have missed. My name's Zach, and today I am joined by Rich. We're going to be talking about Inspire Isles today, and what you didn't hear but i said already was we've been trying to set this up for a little bit now yeah long time isn't it things get in the way you know there's a lot it was right in the heart of production wasn't it so like um i had quite a lot of commitments but um you were one of the first people to approach me though so i I had to honor it in the end and here we are brilliant i'm so glad too because i'm really excited about this every single time i see somebody talking about inspirals i get really excited uh, it's such an adorable and unique system. But we're going to talk about that a little bit more shortly. Rich, can you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so um, my Twitter handle is at HatchlingDM, and that's uh, so why I do most of my sort of uh, social connections and and communication on there, and promotion, as I've discovered mm-hmm. recently. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm a designer, developer, and writer for all ages role-playing games and um, I started off on this path with a small D&D 5e group for teenagers in my local community in in the UK okay and uh, after playing with that group for about a year and a half I kind of thought um, I think I need to develop my own role-playing game you know I've got a history in writing creative writing Mm -hmm. I did a master's degree in that in the UK Oh, wow. And uh, I try to write novels, but I'm a very, 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 very extroverted socialist, per- social social person. And um, <laughs> not socialist, social person. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, you know, like solitary kind of um, novel writing didn't suit me at all. Yeah. Uh, in any way, shape or form. Even when I did write, try to write novels, I was in a cafe, you know, surrounded by people chatting away. And, you know, like working on role playing games and and eventually having a team behind me is like my idea of heaven. So I'm constantly engaged with people and constantly kind of talking to them, constantly getting feedback. And it's just a wonderful collaborative process. But that's cutting ahead too much. But um, basically, I I wanted to develop my own game. Mm -hmm. Uh, I work for a deaf charity for 12 years now. I still work there part time. Oh, wow. And um, I thought one day, I literally woke up one morning, I thought, um, wouldn't it be cool to combine my day job, which I'm passionate about, with my passion uh, for role playing, my hobby. And, and that's how Inspirals came about. It combines sign language, deaf awareness with uh, a role playing game. That's, yeah, that's, I think, the biggest draw that people are seeing from Inspirals is that mix of teaching sign language. And you you and your team have done some incredible work with that. I want to touch on that in a little bit, but can we talk a little bit about what Inspirals is exactly? Yeah, so it's kind of a it's an all ages role playing game. So in other words, uh, we've play, we've play tested it from as young as um well, 6 actually my daughter grasped it really well um to 11 year olds. We've play play tested it with 11 year olds. That's going really well. And it's in a couple of schools now. Oh, wow. Uh, so it works with very young people all the way up to adults because it will appeal to adults, of course, as well, especially mm-hmm. aesthetically. Um, but basically, the, the, the concept behind the game is that um, it's a bit like... It's kind of inspired by um, quite a few things. At its heart, thematically, it's kind of like the never-ending story. Oh, I love that. Yeah, in that book and, in, in that book and a movie, it's, um, 
obviously they're, they're, they're tackling a thing called the, the nothing, mm -hmm. which is essentially wiping out large areas of the, of the kingdom. Yeah. And, they, uh, and, it's, and it's caused through a lack of belief in the world, essentially. And that is at the heart of Vince Brawl. So you basically, as a player, as a Pendragon, you are um, the, the descendant of Arthur and Guinevere Pendragon, you know, the Arthurian uh, figures. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you're the very, very distant uh, descendant of them. And uh, you go to this island and your sole purpose or your bloodline is to, is to collect belief and battle disbelief, which is like opposing energies. And once you've collected enough belief, you, you feed it to the world tree, which is slowly rotting as you arrive on the islands through disbelief. And then you, um, you heal the world tree and then you get your ticket home. So you've fulfilled your kind of pact made by your Guinevere a long time ago, like centuries ago. And that's kind of the heart of the game. That is such a cool concept because I had noticed right off the hop, I, I read a lot of Arthurian legend and there's a lot of that in here. Um, in like a yeah. very cool and different way and just like using names with themes match up and I, I was immediately drawn to that uh, especially when I noticed that the player characters are pen dragons I thought that was super fun so I'm glad to to see that that's kind of how it links in yeah this, I, I love that name as well I love it, it just if it just feels oh, so phenomenal. right like the idea of of being a pen dragon is like it just it just mm -hmm. it just rolls off the tongue. I just, things like that. I like the, I like language, obviously. Yeah. Having a writing background, but like um uh just things like that. But you discover this as you develop it. You know, like it started off being called Foundlings. Okay. And like um and uh but you just as as you bring more and more themes in and you bring more elements in, you, things change. And I like that. I like the organic process mm -hmm. of game design. And um. And language is used with it. But so, so alongside the main kind of idea of it is, is this the other big element, which is a sign language. And that is, 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 is done through a, a sort of mechanic called, we called shaping. Okay. Uh, hence the hand shapes, basically. That's what it comes ah. from. Um, obviously, in Avatar The Last Airbender, you have bending. Uh, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of similar to that. So you, you utilize and manipulate the elements uh, through a, a process of shaping. But um, for example, uh, at level one of the game, as you start the game, you will use the alphabet and numbers. Okay. So uh, you'll be you you come up with your pen dragon name, and then you will you will finger spell it using the alphabet. Okay. Uh, around the table, and then as you use your elements, you will finger spell fire, and you will use the symbol for fire, uh, which is all on sheets and also with accompanying uh, tutorial videos. Yeah, the tutorial videos are super interesting. I think they're going to be really beneficial for for Yeah, I think people. so. I think I did, we didn't want to do it in, in half measures. We wanted to do this properly and professionally. Uh, and also all the, all the materials being produced and uh, consulted on by the deaf community and our colleagues at the charity. So it wow. pays to have like really good contacts and really good friends in that community, obviously. <laughs> Because without 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 my colleagues like Rajni and Katie and and John and all these people, um, it yeah. would never have happened. That's incredibly cool. So, your signing or shaping is your spells, then, right? That's how you're kind of yeah. coming up with that. And yes. at its at its heart, part of this game is a teaching tool for, I believe you said BSL and ASL, right? Yeah. So the book originally was going to be made for BSL because, obviously. This is this is a whole different subject, but the Kickstarter is a, is a whole separate thing of my life. Yes. It seems. But um, essentially, just to touch on that, um, we obviously wanted to just to do it initially because I'm a UK developer. We we're going to do it in, yep. in British Sign Language originally, but we had stretch goals, really high stretch goals for ASL, a complete yes. ASL version. Um, never in my wildest dreams that I think it would ever make the money it made. But obviously, yes, I have some questions about that too. Yeah. I do. I'm very excited to talk about that. But of course, as soon as we opened it up to the to the American market, mm -hmm. it just exploded. Um, yeah. But we decided very late on that why not have both languages in this in the same book? Because it would save a lot. It would make it much more accessible to a lot more people. Yes. It would be a much more useful tool, and we'd only have to print one version of it. <laughs> <laughs> Like, <laughs> that's totally fair. I get that. It makes sense, right? No, it does. So you mentioned there the, the hand, like, 
using your sign language for, for shaping. How else does this game work, though? Because most tabletop role-playing games also use a dice system of sorts. Can you go in a little bit about how the game plays? Yeah, so um, at the heart of the game is the shaping, and that's kind of like... There's no weapons in the game, for instance. There's no like hand-to-hand mm-hmm. -hand combat or anything. It's all done through spells and the elements. And now, yeah. how the elements translate to dice is it uses a simple 3D6 system. Now, the elements are divided into aggressive shapes and defensive shapes. So if you're a fire shaper or an air shaper, you're an aggressive shaper. Okay. If you're water and earth, you're defensive, right? So how this translates is in, in a battle, in a, it's called a disbelief battle, you're against an opponent, which would be the grail guide, which would be the GM, essentially. Okay. And uh, it's a contested role. Now, what fire and air do is they, they, they allow you to re-roll your opponent's dice because they're seen as an aggressive action. Yes. Water and earth allow the, the, the shaper to re-roll their own dice. Now, how that translates as well, the, the, the other th element to that is that the, the, the elements have dominance over others. So as you can imagine, fire dominates earth for a start. Yeah. Now, what that means within the system and the mechanics is that if you're against an opponent, an earth opponent, and you're, and you're wielding fire as your shape, mm -hmm. they do not have their re-roll mechanic. You nullify it. Oh. Yeah. And the reason that's an advantage to pen dragons is because the group always chooses a representative first. So if you're in a group of four players and you're against an earth opponent, then you just get your fire shaper to step up first. So they automatically most times would win the first round. Oh, OK. So it's it's one part role playing game, uh, one part strategy then. Yeah, it's it's very light strategy as it's a very yeah. it's a very rules like game anyway. But it's really fun. the The kids love doing mm -hmm. it. The kids because it's only three D six. They the math the math's yeah. very easy. You know, it's very very digestible. But like just having that re roll re roll mechanic is actually a load of yeah, fun. Yeah, it is. Because it's like oh, I get to re roll my one, or I get to I get to re roll your six. Oh, wow. You so, know, it's not over till it's over. So um, yeah, it's 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 I, we find it's quite intuitive and it's it's, it's a bunch of fun and um, along with the, the sign language for the elements and mm -hmm. like the narrative sense, like we had a play test earlier and um, uh, and one of the initial tests, the tutorial test, is to get a golden trout out of a lake using all yeah. four elements. Now we've had so many inventive ways that people have done this. We've had people combining fire and um, air and earth to make an earthenware kind of like dish to like pluck it out of the water okay. we've had people create bubbles around their head to literally dive under the surface and locate the trout and then raise the bed of the lake in like a cylinder we've had people go around the outside of the lake with air and blast the water to bring the fish into a center into like a like a catch area We've had uh, fire and air combined to make to, to identify the fish above the surface with like flames, mm -hmm. the golden scales. So it just dozens and dozens of inventive ways to use the elements. And within the game, it's very forgiving. We, in, in other words, if you can come up with any reason to use your element at all, you get a bonus to the role. And that's how the elements work. So your leader will, will, will start with, say, water. If they if any of your assisted players find a way to use to help with the test with their element, you get a plus one to the dice roll. Okay, I really like this. the uh, the The success of this game makes it really accessible for that that family age group dynamic that you mentioned yeah. there. I really like that. It's a really good way. I feel like to to introduce this to younger players. This feels like a really good system just to not even just to get people started on but to tell a totally different story than a lot of games can yeah i think so yeah i think i think the elements are just there to 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 um kind of enhance the fun factor really yeah you know but because it's such a an inventive like i've watched i it's funny enough like i i, I know it's, it's hard to believe but i didn't see avatar before I started developing the game i just i was really? everyone everyone meant yeah honestly everyone mentioned i knew there was a terrible film out that like oh. um, <laughs> version, like a dreadful <laughs> version of it. I'd heard of it, but I obviously never watched that. I'm quite a movie buff, so I would I would have avoided it. But um, but I've watched the anime for, for uh, 
the animated series through quite a few times now and um and it's it's absolutely stunning it's it's gorgeous it's and i love the way they use the elements but within sprawls it's very very much looser so in other words if you're an earth shaper you can manipulate metal anyway if it's got minerals yeah. in it if you're a fire shaper you can you can change light you can um like heat things up so um because the shapes are from within your body they kind of like um they gather from different organs um, so fires from the heart, water from the bladder, airs from the uh, the lungs, and earth from the body, our stomach rather. You can kind yeah. of um, you can kind of gather them up from inside, so you can you can shape however you wish. I love that. That's so cool. I love those those loose and fast rules that just make this a really tight system. Yeah, but I I just I just don't, I just don't like those no, those kind of narrowed systems, those linear systems no. where it's like this is the only way it can happen. Yeah, it's like we don't want any of that. We want like if you say you want to do that, if you want to cast lightning using like a fire and air or whatever, mm -hmm. then we're going to allow you to do that. The hundred percent can allow you to do that, like, and give you a bonus to the roll because you've come up with any idea at all. So you mentioned it. Uh, just a moment ago, actually, the success of your Kickstarter. Now, mm. I wasn't doing the podcast at the time. Uh, I had seen it pop up a couple times, but I want to ask you, you raised almost 20, over 20 times the funds that you were looking for originally. How did that feel? It was, oh, it was, uh, as you can imagine, very, very exciting, mm -hmm. but also very, very uh nerve-wracking um yeah i was on holiday in in um in where did we go we went to wales with my, oh. my wife um for a, like a getaway and, and that was right when the kickstarter was happening and because i just i didn't really engage with it until it started to <laughs> to, to, to increase <laughs> like uh, i think we made like four times our goal in the first day or oh, no first seven hours it was and um, I couldn't compute it at all. I, I didn't really understand um, until I realised that it was the sign language um, aspect that was so appealing to the role playing community. Yeah. Um, as you can, as you know, like especially even as we go through time, like the, the inclusivity factor and the accessibility factor is hugely important to the role playing community. Yes, it is. Like, and it's becoming more and more prevalent and and that's wonderful and and it just happened to like uh light a fire under the game i think i think it definitely helped with that because i launched with all my own art and I, i'm not a great artist <laughs> I, I had to do the video myself you know and uh my wife did the voiceover for it and you know i had to put the subtitles together and, and the images and you know i'm not i'm not an expert in any of these things so it was, it was sold solely on the cover art and mm -hmm. the premise and that was enough and that was enough that was enough to get fully funded and and have a whole team behind me now like yeah. 12 or 13 people which i i, I love them all you know i have as i said at the beginning like i'm an extrovert i'm a very social person i i can think of nothing better than to to work on role-playing games with people so uh, it's a dream come true it's something that most designers I've talked to, when their game launches or hits that first big goal, um, they they say they they can't really believe it that people are are believing them to this point or mm -hmm. have this high expectation or something like that, and that can be really stressful, I'm sure, too. At the same time, yeah, I mean that month was by far the most stressful month in my life. It was apart from apart from just before the birth of our children. Um, <laughs> I can understand that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. But that but that month, like personally, was like because it was all it was all really on me. You know, like the whole responsibility was on me. Um, I had had a bit of help, like with some of the system and things, but, but essentially the the whole thing was on my back. And um, and it, I was, I felt proud. Obviously, I felt very proud of it. Like, and 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 and, and I can tell the concept was well accepted, but um, but it was, it was, it was terrifying. You know, imposter syndrome that that, that people yeah. talk about it was, it was very real. 
you know. And um, but at the end of the day, if you look at the statistics on the Kickstarter, especially sixty five percent of funding was from Twitter. Oh, really? I only had a hundred one point five thousand followers at that point. So sixty five percent of thirty one thousand pound was from Twitter followers. That's such a high rate. So it's pretty extraordinary, That's right? Pretty extraordinary. So how supportive my the community on Twitter have been for me and still are, is is uh, is, is makes me speechless in some ways. I'm yeah. That's that's so that's such a high yeah. number of that's that's way more than I expected. It's huge. It's huge. It's what it's twenty two thousand. I think it was. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. It's it's it's, it's, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. I've always felt so much support from the Twitter community. I've always tried to keep my account very wholesome and kind of very supportive. And boy, do they pay it back. I've seen that on on just when I'm scrolling through, I'll see you post something. It's typically something very positive and very good. A lot of the times you're you're yeah. promoting somebody else or like being like, hey, check out this cool thing. So I really, I think people really appreciate that too. Yeah, I think so. I think, I think that's the way I've always kind of run... Mm-hmm. my role playing life i've 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 narrowed it down to just that one thing i try not to get too political really yeah. i try to stay away from that just because of my own mental health as well and um and yeah i'm just trying to just support other people and now i've got you know not to leap too far ahead but on feathers our second game i've got like an incredible team of yeah. like collaborators now and these are like huge designers that I really admire. Um, and they all said yes automatically, like just straight away. Like, you know, so it's, 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 very much, it's very much a give and take thing with the community. It's very much like, you know, it's not like, it's, it's like alchemy, isn't it? It's like equivalent exchange. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, you know, you, you help me out and you support me and I'll do the same for you. It's not, yeah. it's not, it's not, it's not rocket science. No, it's... <laughs> Treat other people nicely. <laughs> yeah, also, but but don't but don't do it don't do it for the wrong reasons. You know, don't exactly. do it to like big yourself up. Do it genuine, being genuine about it. Yeah, and like really want to help people. But you know, like it's my my job. My job. I, I work with um. You know, obviously de- the deaf community, but it's like mm-hmm. independent living. So like I've always worked yeah. to help people. So it's inherent in me. You know. That was actually a huge part in me feeling more comfortable because uh, a. Po- People who listen to this, they might know I'm a I'm a youth worker myself. So yeah. working with a, a vulnerable population is definitely or like a sometimes saying vulnerable population doesn't feel right. Mm. But a, a group that is a lot easier to take advantage of because they mm-hmm. can't communicate the same way we can is yeah. definitely something that I feel really passionate about. So yeah. uh, when I found out that that was actually your day job it made me a lot more comfortable going into this and i yeah. i've had a little bit of a different approach coming into this interview and uh it's been yeah. refreshing to say the least oh that's nice that's nice to hear yeah it's um it, it does help with interactions definitely if you've got yes. like a um i can the only way i can describe it is kind of like um like a lack of ego about stuff really yeah that makes sense you know because uh, you're supporting people all the time, you know, mm-hmm. and it can be very stressful. It can be very stressful. It's not it's not a particularly thankful job in some ways. You know, you don't get a lot of <laughs> positive feedback sometimes. No, sometimes it can be it's really very harsh. demanding. <laughs> yeah. yeah, very harsh. Yeah. But, it, you know, it thickens your skin. It, it makes you kind of appreciate what you have. Yeah. With going back to the Kickstarter, just a little bit before we move on to the next thing I want to bring up. Yeah. That that success, did that give some more freedom into developing this game? Oh, it just gave, it gave everything, gave everything. So we've spent, we've spent, we're spending every penny on this book. Oh. So because, because initially because of, well, I didn't know anything, I know anything about tax. <laughs> I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> yeah. I have, I have, no, I have, I've never had anything like that amount of money to play with. Nothing yes. like it. You know, I've been on minimum wage, my partner have for, for essentially our whole lives. So, um, so this is like, was such a shock to us, as I described earlier, like mm-hmm. it was so well received, but, um, I already had in the kind of, um, I suppose you can call them stretch goals or like, uh, like, like yeah. wish list. 
I already had like a few people I wanted to like get on board. The first person I wanted on board was a layout artist because I had, would have no clue how to do that professionally. Yeah, and it's a such a such a specific job role or such a specific skill that I I, I probably could have bumbled my way through like uh, like a program, um, but I would not have been as good a job. Anna Anna. Urban X doing our, our layout and it looks absolutely gorgeous. So I can't, I can't actually get my head around it. Um, I have seen a couple of things that you've shown, oh, us, like yeah, the I've befores just... and the afters, and yeah, oh, there is wow. a world of difference. Yeah, it, there's there's something to it. <laughs> yeah. So um, and then obviously you could play Josh and and Ashley and um, and uh, Lucille for their like illustrations. Yeah. But the the mate the biggest thing for me and for the team. Mm-hmm. is the bespoke sign language sheets they they are completely next level because originally believe it or not i was going to link people to the british sign language site <laughs> so oh, like well yeah that's fair oh honestly yeah that's what it's no, going to be but... it was going to be get get the alphabet here yeah yeah the, and they're so clear and concise too i've looked at them um, yeah my, beautiful. My, partner, my partner knows a little bit of asl um, yeah. and i've shown her kind of my i know nothing about it which is part of the reason why i'm so excited for this game uh because yeah. i really want to learn it for a yeah. multitude and of reasons you're the target audience you're our target exactly audience. and i've shown her a little bit about the the stuff that in just using your diagrams and being like okay it's this mm-hmm. right and she's like yeah you you got it they explain it very clearly and that that in and of itself is it says something yeah i'm utterly thrilled that we get our own sign language sheets. Mm-hmm. Utterly thrilled by it. And I keep saying to Ashley, like, because it's not quite as, um, I guess, not quite as in your face as the, as the book illustrations, you know, like no. these, these bold characters. I keep saying to her, like, you are probably the most important element of the whole game. You pro- she, pro- she probably is, in fact. Like, I could probably, not to, not to, not to belittle any of the artists <laughs> on it, because they're, they're all remarkable, but like, I could possibly replace them with another artist. But Ashley, I can't, is irreplaceable? Yeah. If that makes sense. She's no, like, I the, understand the, that. Yeah, yeah. I think your teammates would understand. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of bounced back and forth a little bit. Um, yeah. We've mentioned it, and you've kind of, you've dropped it here and there. Um, designing mm. a game is stressful. And especially during this this current time, uh, mental health is a big factor in Mm. everybody's life. This project started from me having a mental health spiral, actually. Um, Thankfully, it Mm. turned out positively. Would you be willing to touch a little bit about some of your own mental health struggles that have come up through this? So, yeah, um, similar to you, I kind of had a uh, mental health downward spiral um, this is around June time uh, last year, and um, I kind of had to retreat to my parents' house in Cornwall in the UK. Um, but I had a week down there; it was very healing. Uh, I even got some counselling, and um, I just thought to myself when I was down there, and you know, talking to people, talking to my parents, especially I'm very, very close to my mother, and um, I was saying like, I'm, for- I'm forty, I'm forty, forty-one now. And, um, you know, nothing's happened with my writing, really. You know, I've tried, like I said, I tried to do some novel writing, but it never really took off. Um, this is like a crossroads moment. And I thought, and I just thought, you know, to, to I thought, screw it. <laughs> like, I'm going to go back home to my, to my family and I'm going to launch this Kickstarter for this game. <laughs> I'm just going to do it, you know, um, and throw caution to the wind. We're, we're both on minimum wages. You know, like, I've got nothing to lose, really. You know, um, I love the job. Uh, and it pays for me to just about do my writing. So um, launch the Kickstarter and see what happens. You know, throw caution to the wind a little bit. And thank everything that I did. You know, it's sometimes those leaps when you're in a dark place um, that can really pay off, I think. And uh, and I I've been the, the same my whole life really I've I've kind of got to very low places, and I've kind of um, stood up from them you know instead of um, falling away really, 
Um, I know that's not possible for everyone. No, no, no it's, one, not it's remotely. Super difficult. Very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm I'm a very optimistic person though, really at heart. So mm-hmm. I will, and I'm spontaneous, and as I said, an extrovert. So it tends to help with taking leaps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's um, I'm I'm glad that you had the support network and people that you can lean yeah. on. Yeah. I know that uh, for myself personally, I'm not, believe it or not, I am super introverted. Um, I'm really shy, actually. And mm. for some reason, being behind the microphone kind of helps with that me opening up and stuff. So there, That's there's lovely. some, yeah, it's, it's super lucky for me because I get to have these phenomenal conversations and these mm. amazing interactions with people who um, can be really inspiring to, to some people. And, yeah. and it just, it warms my heart to, to hear that you were able to bring yourself up from a, uh, a low point and to make yourself confident enough to launch Inspirals, which I think is going to have a huge effect on, on a lot of people. Yeah. I really hope it does. I really hope so. Yeah. So yeah, it's just, it's, yeah, sorry. No, continue, please. No, it's just, it's just, um, it's just like you said about the support network. I mean, I'm very privileged that way. You know, I've got family and, and very strong family behind me and my parents still you know, still are very close to them and um yeah. Places on go and, and, and even even a counsellor, you know, like is 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 it's difficult to, to have one, really. Yeah. It's not a guarantee, you know. They're not cheap either. They're not cheap. Um and all it takes is one one bad experience. Mm. And for I sure. can I can tell you before I found one that I could talk to originally. I had a bad experience yeah. and that kept me from counseling for a very long time. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, I guess what I, I'm trying to say, and I, I hope that you're trying to say too, Rich, is that if you're listening to this and you're in a, in a dark place, just, just know that there are people that will listen to you and it may, it may seem really difficult. And I know that sounds cheesy. It sounds mm absolutely corny but there there is somebody out there who is gonna, yeah. who will yeah. listen and it's it's going to be yeah. hard for you to it's going to be hard but yeah. th- there are people who will support you and there's people who are trained to so yeah of course yeah i mean i I'm always, always try to be there for the twitter community exactly oh, yeah people that follow me i say like sometimes you know my dms are open if you need to talk really yep. because i generally don't mind doing that <laughs> You no, know, I if don't I've got either. the energy, if I've got the energy, then I, I'd love, mm-hmm. I love, you know, I love helping people. That's, that's what I care about, really. Love being a parent, love helping people. I, I enjoy it so much that I made it my job. So. <laughs> same, same. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Same. Yeah. 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 And it always will be my job, I think. I think so, too. I think in one way or another, it's always going to be my job. <laughs> but we're actually running pretty low on time here, and I yeah. want to kind of get us back onto a little bit of a lighter note a lighter yeah. note in a dark way though uh COVID-19 okay. <laughs> <laughs> mm. yeah, I know that yeah. that's great but you mm. said that you launched that this the, the previous summer how did COVID-19 affect the development of Inspire Isles there's a couple of things that affected it it wasn't just COVID it was polit- politics in the U.S. mainly really yeah oh, because yeah, because no, it, that makes sense <laughs> yeah, because it really, really, really affected um, our, some of our team members. I obviously won't name anyone. No, uh, it's not my place to do that. But it did affect them, like definitely emotionally. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it delayed the, the output, which was absolutely fine. Fine, you know, like I, I could, I could put anything on on the on the Kickstarter really and say, like, you know, people would automatically understand that it's going to yes. be delays. Every single game developed at that over that period has been delayed. Every single mm-hmm. film, every single movie, every single project. Um, but the other main thing that was delayed was the uh, the studio. We booked a studio for, I think it was for it was uh, it was before the sorry after the first lockdown in the UK, which we didn't know was going to happen. Obviously, yeah. um, so it's going to be in the new year, and um, we booked we we paid for the whole studio to do the, to the sign language tutorials, and right. for the fil- filmmakers and all this stuff, mm-hmm. and um, obviously that they had to shut down. 
Yes. So we couldn't do we didn't do the tutorial videos until um, last month, late last month. So it was like yeah, uh, May, the end of May, which is kind oh, of wow, that was kind super, of fine, <laughs> super close. <laughs> but we thankfully we had all the material ready. We had the we had obviously had the deaf the deaf um, signers ready, like Katie and Rajni, um, mm -hmm. and they were already paid <laughs> up front. Oh, and, thank God. Um, mm -hmm. And we had the filmmaker ready to go. So. Um, Beautiful. It was turned out really, really well, um, but the logist logistics of doing all these things is is all completely new to me, and you know, I've had to learn so so much, especially as a project manager and yeah. like a company director. Like these are two things I never imagined myself doing. Like either of those things, and it's been it's been fun, but it's been incredibly tough. It's a whole new world for you, eh? Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> it's going to be easier, isn't it? Because I've already done them all. Uh, yeah. Like the, the Feathers Kickstarter will be far simpler. There won't be the same mistakes made. No. Um, and we've got resources from the start now. So it's going to be lovely. Yeah. It's going to be really lovely. Yeah, I hope we'll be able to bring you back on after the next oh, Kickstarter. Yeah. That'd be great fun. I'd love that. That'd be fun. So last question of the night. Where can people find more about you and Inspire Isles? So we've got, um, we've obviously most, I do most of my posting on, on Twitter. So at Hatchling yep. DM, um, we've got a discord, uh, which is on my, in my profile, I believe, um, yep. on Twitter. Um, we've got a website, uh, www.hatchlingsdm.com. Uh, mm -hmm. We've got a, a Facebook page. Uh, you oh. know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've got, we've got 700, no, 700 people on there. Um, but yeah, oh, um, wow. yeah, so people, many, most people don't know about, it. I don't post much on there, but obviously a lot of the, uh, t the, the Kickstarter was raised from for Facebook people as well, spreading the word. So, oh, um, great. yeah, it's really cool. Um, and the game's coming out, hopefully the PDF next Thursday. Hey, so, so it's really close. Who, yeah. You people who heard next Thursday, the game's actually already out. Because this of course is, it is up yeah. on the twenty second, yeah. So yeah. all that is going to be linked below, and yeah, I I'm so excited for Inspire Isles. I'm excited to hear people's Thanks, stories. Zach. I one of my favorite things is your Discord channel where people talk about their adventures so far. It's and so I, such a lovely community, and and we're in fact just to say we're, we're ten of those members are writing our anthology of questing days. Oh, cool! And I'm really yeah. excited about that. So that that'll be out in probably August, fully fully wow. with full art, full um, you know, full layout done, and that that'll, that'll give people with the core game like a uh, a set of ten questing days to run straight off the bat. Just having those pre written materials is going to be a great way to get people into this. Yeah, it's going to be it's lovely. Be so it? much fun. It's going to be lovely, and that'll come with that'll come with uh, an additional couple of sign language sheets for the environment, okay. for instance. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Oh. So we'll re release all these expansions with um, sign language material as well. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Well, all that will be linked in the description below this video or this podcast, depending on the platform that you are listening to. Well, but I just forgot how to speak for a moment there. Everything's going to be <laughs> available below as always. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on here, Rich, and thank you. Good Zach. luck with, good luck with the next uh, week or so. There, it's going to be a lot, yeah. but it's going to be incredible. So I've done yeah. the hard work. I can I can just um, get oh, yeah. excited about it now. Exactly. So everybody else, Inspire Isles is scheduled for launch very very soon. For you, it's already out there. Have a good night and take care of yourselves. Night. Thank you so much to Rich for coming on to the show this week. I personally picked up Inspire Isles this morning of recording this, and it's just phenomenal. If you know someone who's wanting to learn or start learning either BSL or ASL, I don't really even care if you direct them to this episode, but please show them this game. On to housekeeping, though. With your help, we've broken 250 listens, and I gotta say, I can't, I can't believe it. 
this is the 12th episode and we hit our 100th download at like episode eight so that's that was in the middle of may or something like that so i gotta say just thank you so much it's been really cool and if you like the show please send it to other people so that they can listen to it especially those people who are trying to make something interesting and cool because i want to talk to them next week we have a really different type of show happening because we're not going to be talking about a tabletop role-playing game but an accessory for it we're going to be talking with christian the creator of the audio app my sound dell and it's going to bump up the immersion of your table so much i assure you that Hope to see you there.